Good evening, and welcome to Grace Lutheran. It's very nice to have all of you with us this evening, uh, particularly too. It's nice to have those of you who are watching us either live streamed right now, uh, or if you're watching later as a recording. I'm Pastor Lochran. I'm the senior pastor here at Grace. And we are going to begin our order of service this evening. Oh, yeah, I better make my announcements as well, too. We've switched our order around just a little bit. So before we begin with the song, a couple things to let you know about. So first, um, we are going to have a deaconess, a visiting deaconess from our church body here uh, tomorrow and Monday, Deaconess Sandra Ryan. Deaconess Ryan has a very interesting uh, ministry. She is a missionary. Right now, she's assigned to Asia. And what she does is she helps people uh, write a hymnal in their indigenous language. And that's way harder than it may sound. Uh, she's recently worked with several, several African countries. Uh, you're talking about very different cadences in terms of uh, the way um, uh, poetry works, the way music works. So trying to, to get them to fit hymn texts and song texts uh, with the type of music, uh, this sort of thing. It's a very fascinating ministry that she has. Uh, so she'll be talking to us about that tomorrow uh, in between services during Sunday school time. Uh, and then with our school kids on Monday during the day as well, too. So I'm very excited. She's a good friend. I'm very excited to have her here. We had a great community giveaway today. Uh, so as you're walking through the welcome area, you notice some extraneous stuff that's around there in the old narthex area. That's just residual leftover from that. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, we, we receive things like we were going to have a rummage sale, uh, but then we gave them away to people from our community uh, who came, who were in need, and it was a, we had over 150 people here today. So it was wonderful, it really was. A number of whom came in the church, they might have had concerns, I sat with them, I prayed with them, that type of thing. Uh, Grandparents' Day uh, was Friday, I'm letting you know about that because the, the kids, uh, wanted, they know that several of you are grandparents and veterans as well too, so that's why there's art that's decorating the welcome area. They wanted the congregation to see those things and to let you know that they appreciate all of you uh, who might be veterans or grandparents as well. So we left those up for an extra day. And I will let you know, even though you're looking around and there's a sparse crowd here, um, you know, as we continue to move forward in the last two weeks, uh, we've had four services here at Grace where we've had over 200 people at that service. So that's very exciting after a year and a half not to see that, uh, to suddenly see people coming back. In fact, one of them we had over 300 people at. Um, so it looked like, a, say, a typical Christmas Eve or Easter service. So very excited about that, a little anxious, but very excited about that. All right, at this point, we'll go ahead, and as we often do with this Saturday evening service, uh, we'll sing an opening hymn.
that we'll need for this evening will be on the screen. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. O oh Lord, bring me the house going to the world and cause me to face trouble. This can make me doubt and make me uneasy by the heart. Continue to encourage me to trust in you. Keep me in your presence throughout my earthly pilgrimage, that I may come to the fullness of your glory. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of our sin, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Old Testament reading for the 25th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. At that time shall rise, Mike, arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been seen, never been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins he sat down at the right hand of god waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified and the holy spirit also bears witness to us for after saying this is the covenant that i will make with them after those days declares the lord I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and the living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pangs, but be on your guard. For they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say. But say whatever is given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord.
This is the second to last weekend of the church year. It's a time, and I'm sure you noticed this from the reading, a time when our attention is fixated on the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to judge the living and the dead. For we who are a part of his church on earth, the appointed collect, that prayer that we had earlier, with its plea, O oh Lord, by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm in Christ Jesus resonates in these dark and latter days. Days that began, by the way, almost immediately after the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Days that were in full bloom already, as the author to the Hebrews wrote. Now, I'm sure that many of you have heard it before, that Hebrews was a sermon to be read for a congregation that was undergoing some persecution with the probability that there was much more to come in the future. In other words, a congregation in a situation very much like the one we find ourselves in today. For isn't it the case in our dark and latter days that we find ourselves holding a faith that is less and less popular as local worldly rebellion against God and his ways becomes more and more open? It's also a great opportunity for me to remind you that persecution is generally never worldwide. It wasn't worldwide in the first second century or second century or third century and it's not worldwide now in fact there are places in our world today where the faith is flourishing the days are dark they may get darker they may not and Jesus might return at any moment Today, tomorrow, or a thousand years from now, that coming is hidden in the Father's will. We can't know it. Turning to our epistle for this evening, we do so in hopes of receiving the strength of faith that it promises. That is certain. And many scholars, especially Lutheran scholars, believe that Hebrews 10, verses 1 to 18, is the climax of this sermon. So this is a fitting section to have for the very end of the church year. Listen to it a bit one more time. Here's how it started out. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool. Wow. That's a complete rehearsal of salvation history. The objective gospel, as it were, in just a few short verses. But by objective gospel, by the way, theologians mean the facts and strictly the facts of what Jesus did. More on that in just a moment. First, though, it's important to recognize that for chapters, chapters, the author to the Hebrews has been demonstrating the superiority of Jesus' ministry and the covenant that it ushered in to that of the Old Covenant. Here he sums it all up in one verse. The sacrifices that the Old Testament priests performed were not able to forgive the sins of the people. Rather, it was faith in the one to come, the one whom those sacrifices pointed forward to, that gave them forgiveness. 
Salvation by faith through God's grace has always been the order of the day. Right after, since right after the fall into sin, when God first gave the promise of a Savior. At any rate, when that Savior Jesus first came, he offered the efficacious sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God, by going to the cross and dying for the sins of the world there. He rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven, just as these few verses in Hebrews objectively states. But that also begs the question, how do I get me some of that forgiveness that Jesus earned? Where is the objective for me part in all of this? Well, listen further and see, because the answer to that question is coming in the next few verses. Here's how they read. For by a single offering, he's perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Okay, we get it sort of from that. Jesus' death brings forgiveness, that is justification, and through its continual application, it also brings sanctification or, or the holiness that is necessary to enter into God's presence. He goes on, our biblical author, to quote a well-known portion of Jeremiah about the covenant that was made by the shedding of Jesus' blood. Capping this section off with Almighty God's own words, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. <clears throat> Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Very comforting. But it still doesn't answer the question of how do I get me some of that? In fact, if the author to the Hebrews were to have left us here, if any preacher were to leave us here, the temptation would always be to fall back into the trap of works righteousness. As logic takes over and says, okay, Jesus did all this for me, it's wonderful, it's incredible, now I must work hard to believe it, or perhaps to earn his favor. So that he gives it to me. Some of you may recall that we had any number of gospel readings this past summer and fall where people were attempting to do just that, to earn salvation for themselves. <coughs> and Jesus rebuked them. You, you may also recall times in your own life where you felt that way yourself, that you needed to do something to make yourself right before God. You can't. I can't. And we all of us need to constantly be reminded of this because beyond a doubt, it is one of Satan's favorite pieces of forbidden fruit to hold out. He loves to hold out this forbidden fruit before the face of God's people. It, it's a rebellious ladder to climb, and it has no end. This desire to do enough for God that you might feel certain about your salvation in that way by what you're doing, or else on the flip side, you might feel that no matter how much you do or don't do, you'll never be right coming into God's presence. 
And so, in order to put an end to that struggle and strife, listen closely to how you do get some of that. As in the necessary forgiveness that Jesus earned, and the holy life that he offers. Therefore, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. Did you hear it there? What theologians call subjective justification. Now, by subjective, we mean the way in which the objective, what Jesus earned, namely forgiveness, a holy life here, an eternal life there in heaven, by subjective, we mean the way in which the objective is received by a believer. And that way is this. Baptism. That's what the author means by heart sprinkled clean. And on an ongoing basis, the Lord's Supper. That's the new and living way through his Jesus flesh. And also, even though it's not specifically mentioned in our particular reading, God's word preached, heard, read, seen in the visual arts. We had any number of people in this space for the first time today, and all of them admired its beauty as it told them about God's work for them. Or even sung. For this reason, the Augsburg Confession, which we Lutherans have as a part of our own faith confession, along with the ecumenical creeds, rightly states, through the word and sacraments as through instruments, the Holy Spirit is given. He works faith when and where it pleases God and those who hear the good news that God justifies those who believe that they are received into grace for Christ's sake. This happens not through our own merits, but for Christ's sake. So then, as Hebrews continues to exhort us, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. That, dear friends in Christ Jesus, is what sanctification or holy living is all about. No more, no less. Those who are being sanctified receive God's gifts offered through his means, and there share what he offers with others. You see, everything that you do in Jesus' name is done to his glory for your neighbor's sake, whether that neighbor be your own family, friends, co-workers, students, clients, classmates, or anyone else whom God put your path. Again, think of the people whom Jesus met along the way in the gospel readings that we've heard this past year, and how he loved them and served them according to their needs. So it is that you do these things without even realizing it. In fact, it starts right here in the liturgy of the divine services offered at grace, this holy life of yours. For isn't it the case that having received Christ's forgiveness, you will soon confess your faith and then pray for the needs of all people? 
Isn't it the case that your offerings that you bring forward support the work of his church? And then that you, covered with Jesus' blood, do enter the most holy place in the reception of his body and blood given and shed for your forgiveness and life. By word and meal, the Holy Spirit is at work to do the Father's will and keep you firm in the faith until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ's return, whenever that may be. Praise be the holy name of Jesus forever. Amen. Please stand now and join with me in praising God's name by confessing it in the Nicene Creed. I Please be seated for the prayer of the church. In our prayers this evening, we remember those who are listed on our prayer page. Our prayer page is available in the Welcome Center uh, for you to take home so that you can pray for those people during the week. Uh, but we do add the two following requests. Uh, for our deaconess, uh, Deaconess Marissa's husband, Andrew, uh, who was injured at work today, also for the family of Roberta Codel, who passed through death to life eternal just a few short hours ago. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. We thank you, O Lord, our God and Father, for all your goodness. We praise you especially for the everlasting covenant you have made with us through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that every good work we do would be pleasing in your sight for, your, for his sake. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve your church throughout the world and keep us ready at all times for your son's glorious return. Lead us to proclaim with zeal his coming to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all pastors and ministers that they may preach the pure doctrine of God's saving word, which will never pass away. Give faith to all who hear that in Christ they may have the peace that passes all understanding. Be with those who serve in offices in the church that to support that preaching for DCEs, deaconesses, teachers, and support staff in our schools. Lord, in your mercy. Uphold all in authority, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of our state, and all judges. Graciously enable them to lead according to your will and for our good. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Holy Lord, for the fruits of the earth provided by your hand. 
supply the need of all who grow, process, and distribute our food, and move us to share these bountiful gifts with our neighbors in their time of need. Bless the offerings that we bring forward to this place this night, that by your providential hand they may bear much fruit. Lord, in your mercy. Behold the sick and infirm, the dying and all in need, especially Jeff, Beth, Kathy, Judy, Philip, Justine, Diane, uh, Joel, Steve, Jan, Anna Lynn, Renee, Doug, Brenda, Carl, Dennis, Keith, Joan, Charlene, Thalma, Cynthia, Joyce, Paula, Gary, Jay, Dave, Dennis, Mike, Jeff, Justine, Adrian, Ed, Sylvia, Sire, Amy, Larry, River, uh, the fam, the Codal family, Mark, uh, Conaway family, and Man La Paz family. Also, Caden, Boyd, Debbie, Patricia, Paul, Heidi, Paul, and Andrew. Grant them healing of body and patience to endure their afflictions and comfort in their days of need. Lord, in your mercy. Give repentance and faith to all who approach the altar of Christ's gracious invitation, that we may find favor in your eyes and receive his true body and blood for the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And of course, we still don't physically gather up an offering, quite honestly, uh, we, we actually enjoy this practice of being able to bring our offering forward. Uh, so there are offering plates up front. I am going to advise you of one particular need, though. There is a, a fund, a pastor's special fund that I use uh, to help people on occasion with things like their uh, utility bill or perhaps for some buying some groceries, uh, these types of things. Uh, in fact, I looked at it, and over the last three years, I've helped people. We've helped people in our communion, uh, community uh, to the tune of about $22,000. That particular fund is depleted right now as we're turning the corner and moving towards Thanksgiving uh, and then the Advent and Christmas season. There will be great needs for that. Uh, so if you would prayerfully consider uh, some sort of gift towards that account, uh, it would be very, very much appreciated. Please stand and we'll sing the doxology. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, in the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son. You have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another with the Lord's peace.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and keep you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. And let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. serve the Lord.